breaking news at this hour, enough water to kill. Leaders in South Carolina warning everyone to stay indoors right where they are. Do not go outside. Six people have reportedly died in the massive rainfall that's punishing several states along our east coast at this hour. Emergency crews, National Guard troops making more than 100 rescues, and we're told to expect more to come. Some areas could see the rain pound for the next 24 to 48 hours. Bridges, highways across South Carolina, as an example, shut down, washed away. Businesses, schools set to remain closed as we head into the new work week. And this is the beautiful city of Columbia. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley says this is something her state has never seen before. This is um, different than a hurricane because it's water and it's slow moving and it's sitting and we can't just take the water out. So as long as it sits, we just need to do the best we can at controlling the environment around it. Fox team coverage now on what is now considered one of the worst flooding events in our nation's history. Senior meteorologist Janice Dean is standing by in the Extreme Weather Center as we see. Let's go, though, first to Garrett Tenney, who's where they've seen some of the worst of the flooding. Garrett? Harris, this afternoon, Governor Nikki Haley said her state hasn't seen this much rain in more than a thousand years. Right now, safety is the number one priority. They are asking folks to stay at home and keep off the roads if they can. This is why. Right now, we're in the middle of a neighborhood. These are streets that cars would normally be driving down. Today, though, people are getting around on these kayaks. We've seen them going up and down the streets on the neighborhoods here and all across the state. It's not just the roadways with being flooded that officials are worried about. It's also the safety of the roads themselves. Officials say that the streets are so saturated that they're simply just not safe to drive on. Take a look at this video in Columbia where you can see the roads with the rains and the waters. A lot of those roadways are just being completely washed away entirely with massive floods going through that area. You can see in these pictures as well, the roadways, both the ground on the sides and underneath, just being swept away by this. That is why they are saying keep off the roads. And it's not just roadways getting washed away. It's also bridges. They're also concerned about sinkholes and the growing threat of landslides as this rain continues. Tonight, going in tomorrow, more rain is going to be on the way, and that's what they are so concerned about. Over the last three days already, South Carolina has received more rain than it typically does in the entire season. Harris? Garrett, thank you. Let's bring now in senior meteorologist Janice Dean, who's watching this from the Extreme Weather Center. So, uh, Janice, a couple of things. You saw it was still raining there mm -hmm. on Garrett, and this isn't going to let up for a while. How much rain are they getting? Uh, in some cases, Harris, we've seen totals of over two feet of rain. Columbia, South Carolina, to put it in perspective, usually gets about 45 inches in a year. And they have seen half of that in just a matter of 24 to 48 hours. Incredible. Now, you can see this. We've been talking about this fire hose of moisture because we have all of the atmospheric conditions coming together where we've got the storm, Joaquin out in the Atlantic and we've got this area of low pressure here off the coast and the winds associated with both of those are funneling all of this moisture into South Carolina. South Carolina has been the bullseye and it's going not going to let up until Tuesday. But look at some of the uh, rainfall totals historic for certain here over 24 inches Boone. Uh, Hall Plantation, Georgetown, close to 20 inches, Pinewood, close to 20 inches. You get the picture, and it's not over yet. We still have rain surging into this region. Flood advisories have been posted, really, since yesterday morning all along this area. A civil emergency in effect for South Carolina. Officials are urging people to stay inside. Do not venture out. Uh, flash flood warnings continue along the coast here, and we've got very gusty winds. So all of this moisture is being uh, moved into the region with these strong winds. Wind gusts 20, 30, close to 40 miles per hour in some cases. And there's the forecast radar. And it shows you, Harris, really not letting up until Tuesday evening. Oof. So, I mean, this is, it's an historic event. It will go down as one of the worst flooding disasters in U.S. history. The kind of thing that I know first responders are saying, they're witnessing a change in the landscape down in the Carolinas. Yes. As things that are washed away, they're just not going to put back together again. I'm sure uh, the pictures will be so telling. Yeah. yeah. Janice, we'll come back to you if the news warrants on this. Thank you very much. Okay.
And this Fox News alert, as new clues have emerged in the search for the 33 people missing on a cargo ship and the Bermuda Triangle, nearly all of them Americans, search and rescue crews reporting they found a second debris field. 225 miles square of styrofoam, wood, cargo, other items. Now that's roughly the size of the city of Chicago. The company which owns the ship says the container they found earlier appears to be from the ship. And earlier crews found a life ring with the ship's markings. But so far, no sign of that cargo ship itself. Brian Yanis is here. Brian, what more do we know about that debris field? Harris, well, this is the second debris field found today, day four of the search for the El Faro and its 33 crew members. The latest debris field was spotted from the air by this U.S. Coast Guard HC-130 airplane about 88 nautical miles northeast of Samana Cay, Bahamas. The Coast Guard describing the debris field as saturated with thousands of pieces of styrofoam and wood, a cargo door, bumpers from a ship, and multiple 55-gallon drums. The pilot saying the debris field was so littered it looked like a driving range filled with scattered golf balls. None of the debris, we are told, looked like random ocean trash. Earlier today, the Coast Guard spotted a separate debris field about 75 miles northeast of the ship's last known location. It included two life rings, a life jacket, an oil sheen, and a cargo container. Now, the Coast Guard has not confirmed if any of the recent debris belongs to El Faro, but the Coast Guard managed to pull one life ring from the water that did belong to the ship. As we speak, crews aboard helicopters and Coast Guard vessels are now at the scene doing what they can to confirm that this debris belongs to the ship, Harris. Wow, and we've seen family members gathered uh, who are waiting to hear any word. So hard for them. Do these debris fields, Brian, provide any clues as to what may have happened to the ship? Harris, the U.S. Coast Guard is adamant that these debris fields do not definitively prove what happened to the ship, but it does validate that they are searching in the right area, which really, Harris, in the vast expanse of the ocean means everything. They reiterate that this debris could have easily fallen from a ship during a storm. Remember, if if you look at this satellite loop, that white arrow is an approximate last known location of the ship, and you can see it was in the middle of Hurricane Joaquin at the height of a Category 4 storm. The El Faro left Jacksonville, Florida Tuesday en route to San Juan, Puerto Rico, but at approximately 7.20 a.m. Thursday, a distress call on board indicated the ship had lost power. It was leaning 15 degrees. It had taken on water, but they had contained the flooding. The Coast Guard plans to continue the search throughout the night, weather permitting, Harris. Oh, I got chills because you said right when that was happening, Joaquin was still a beast churning out there. Uh, Brian, thank you very much. Oh, for wow. the very latest on the devastating flooding along our East Coast and the search for the missing container ship that we were just telling about there with Brian, tune in tonight for Justice with Judge Janine, live coverage at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on the Fox News Channel. Now,